Reports today that Groupon's rough road to an IPO has hit another obstacle. This time it's a class action lawsuit by former employees who say the company failed to pay them overtime. That's on top of postponements and a series of PR mishaps. Our next guest is a prominent angel investor who sold one of his startups to Groupon. Business Week named Aiden Senku one of the top 25 tech angels and he joins us now here in studio. Aiden, welcome to Bloomberg West. So you were employee number 63 at Google. You lived through Google's IPO even when it hit some bumps in the road when Larry and Sergey gave that interview to Playboy. Do you sympathize with the folks at Groupon right now or or have they crossed the line with some of these PR issues? Well, I think uh, I can understand some of the challenges. I mean, they had such a meteoric rise that it's very, very hard to sustain that over a long period of time. And I'm sure there will be some adjustment and there's a lot of pressure, especially with the pending IPO to, to, to keep that going. But on the other hand, I think employee morale is really important. So uh, I would think that the company might need to uh, watch its course and uh, you know, just make sure that as they're going through this great rise and uh, great growth in their, uh, uh, in, their fa in their current phase, they can actually uh, also keep their employees pretty happy. Now they're facing a class action lawsuit from former salespeople. They're facing a merchant class action lawsuit here in San Francisco. Is all of this piling up? Is this going to seriously jeopardize their IPO? You know, I mean, it's hard to comment on that. It's a little bit unfortunate, obviously. The timing is not ideal. And, you know, these things kind of go on different momentums, either like you have the positive momentum where everybody uh, seems to be kind of only talking about the good news. And as soon as you have one hiccup, then the bad news uh, start piling up. Um, it's an unfortunate situation, and obviously there's no easy way out. We'll see what they do about it. As an investor, you know, how do you look at the Daily Deal's business model? You know, is it fundamentally flawed? You know, I think one of the important insights when we sold the company to Groupon a year and a half ago, um, you know, after a while we were uh, kind of obviously very impressed with how fast the market was growing and we did a little survey around local merchants. Groupon was the only brand that came up that they were aware of and what I realized, the function that it was bringing to local merchants is actual customers. Where a lot of people targeting small businesses are selling tools, Groupon were delivering customers to them. Now, of course, their model is very unique, and with those customers come other, other issues. But uh, I do think that there is something to that model. And as we have seen uh, with some of the clones and in their international business, the growth has been pretty consistent all around the world. So there is definitely something about the model that's working. But with everything that's growing that fast, it also brings its own challenges. What about a company like Facebook, which has been private for so long, but we're expecting them to go public sometime next year? Are we going to see the same sort of controversy when we finally get access to Facebook's real financial numbers? I highly doubt it. I think they had a pretty solid and steady ride. I mean, I think their, their kind of path to IPO reminds me a little bit of more uh, Google's, even though it has taken them a little bit longer. Um, to be honest with you, when you look at their audience, and actually one of the telling uh, statistics is five, ten years ago, you look at the top five internet properties, uh, the only two names have been replaced, uh, Yahoo and Microsoft have been replaced by Facebook and YouTube. So they clearly have taken in a very important role, uh, and also even like with the Yahoo discussions, I think the way where things are moving is people are spending time on mobile, people are spending time on Facebook, uh, so they're clearly benefiting from that. They have a very solid operation, great engineering team. Uh, great product, and uh, I, I think it's going to be a much steadier ride for them. How about Twitter? You do have holdings in Twitter. You sold a company to Twitter. Do you see Twitter on the route to an IPO, or do you see Twitter selling somewhere down the line? You know, I think it's still early to, to tell on Twitter. I mean, obviously, they, they did a fantastic job of becoming a household brand name, and, uh, and, and they're pretty relevant for our times today. But I think where they really have to uh, work a little bit harder is similar to Google uh, deployed page rank on search results to make it relevant to users. With all this uh, Twitter, I, I'm a Twitter user and I have tons of followers and tons of people I follow. There needs to be a little bit more relevance in both their ads as well as the Twitter uh, st uh, stream. So um, I think they have a great product team and they're working on it. So I'm curious to see what they're going to come up with. Now, in terms of other investments that you're looking for, you know, you're an investor in Angry Birds, Rovio. Um, wh what exactly does a company need to have to stand out to you? I think one of the most important things we're looking for is we have a few areas we focus uh, mobile being one of them and we're looking at either current category leaders or companies that have an amazing product uh, fit uh, an amazing product that is resonating with users and those are the companies we're trying to uh, be uh, partners with and help them in their future growth.
All right, Aiden Senku, thanks so much for joining us here on Bloomberg West and sharing those insights.